Hello everyone, I'm NPC Nate, and today I want to talk about an indie game called Roots of Pacha. Roots of Pacha is a gorgeous pixel art farm life sim. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I love pixel art. I am a huge sucker for any pixel art games, and this is no exception. Now, this is set in prehistoric times, so it's a little bit different than the farm life sim games that you might be used to. However, there are a lot of familiar elements. I wanted to make this video because the Roots of Pacha demo just released on Steam, and I wanted to play that and make a video of my impressions of the demo version of the game. Now, when I first logged into the game, the first things I noticed were, of course, the gorgeous pixel art and the music. The music is just immediately so peaceful, so soothing, it's just really, really cool. It lets you know the theme right away. It's got that prehistoric kind of element to it, and I absolutely love it immediately. And of course, as soon as I log in, it's time to create my character. Now, the character creator in this game is pretty decent. There's a lot of options, a lot more than I was expecting, and they look really good. Uh, you can make a really cool looking character in this character creator. Uh, I love especially the facial tattoos, and I love all the color options. It just looks great and it works really well and I'm really happy with it. I like it a lot. Now, once you finish creating your character and start the game, the first thing that happens is a cutscene starts playing to introduce you to the story of the game. Now, the story of this game is nothing mind blowing. Uh, it's, you know, fairly simple, but it's nice. It's a good story. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, basically, I don't want to spoil anything, but basically, uh, you and your tribe find a new place to live. And that's pretty much it. But it's good. After the cutscene, you'll be able to really start playing the game. Now, the gameplay uh, for this game is pretty much what you would expect for the most part out of a farm life sim, right? There is a lot of familiar elements. So, you know, there's going to be gathering there's crafting there's farming you know fishing uh, all the usual things that you would expect to see uh and it's done really well uh everything works well and you know it feels nice to play so let's get into some of the specifics of these elements so first let's talk about gathering and the Roots of Pacha does this a little bit differently, or it does one part of it differently, and it's something that I like a lot. So usually with these types of games, you start with maybe a hoe, an axe, and a hammer or pickaxe or something like that, and each one of these tools does a different thing. Well, in Roots of Pacha, you have a sort of multi-tool for simple tasks uh, called a hand axe, and the hand axe uh, is used for chopping wood, tilling the ground, breaking rocks, cutting grass, and harvesting crops. Uh, and it's also used for fishing, which is what I want to talk about next. But I really love this concept of having a simple multi-tool to handle these simple tasks that you begin with. So then you don't have to juggle quite so many tools. And I think it works really, really well. So now, let's talk about fishing. Okay, fishing and Roots of Pacha really might be my new favorite fishing of any game ever. This is honestly the best fishing I've ever seen in a farm life sim. Now, I understand maybe someone out there will disagree with me uh, because this is a little bit different and in my opinion it's very unique and it's very creative and I appreciate that a lot. It's also very peaceful and very beautiful. So what happens is you go into the river or wherever and when you start to fish this circular pond will appear 
And instead of having a line sitting there, you see the fish swimming around and you hover your mouse over the fish. And then this is the mini game, right? It's got a bar on the bottom broken as segments. Say a basic fish has three segments and over time those will fill up uh, with green. And you want all three of those segments to be green and then you can catch the fish. And then there's an added element of if the fish notices you, it'll say something, you know, the fish notices you and there will be like an exclamation point that starts filling up. And you need to move your mouse cursor away from the fish until that exclamation point meter goes back down and then you can start hovering over the fish again. And honestly, I've had so much fun with this. It's not overly challenging, but it's challenging enough to keep me engaged. And at the same time, I'm still relaxed. I'm feeling peaceful. I'm feeling chill. And it's just it's such a nice experience, in my opinion. Uh, I think the fishing is just done really, really well. Now, for the demo, I've only been able to fish with the hand axe. I don't know what the difference is once you upgrade to better tools uh, specific for fishing. Um, but, you know, the mini game will stay the same. So I'm sure that will only affect like, you know, the stats and how easy it is to catch them. But the fishing itself and the way that they designed it is phenomenally done. And I am absolutely in love with it. All right. So now let's talk about mining. Now, in Roots of Pacha, there is one place where you can mine, at least in the demo, called the cave. And the basic idea of mining is not anything uh, really new or groundbreaking. It's, uh, you know, basically you break rocks and then when you break a specific rock, the door to the next room will open and you'll be able to proceed. So that's not necessarily a new concept. However, there is a lot of stuff going on in this cave that's very specific to this game. So in the cave, there's it's a sort of event uh i don't remember if it's i think the third day maybe when this starts where you'll be able to access the cave and when you go in you find these uh like neon colored armadillos I, they look like armadillos to me i don't know uh and basically they're giving you a trial to complete and as you proceed through the cave you'll find different totems and the different totems require uh, sacrifices of different items. I think like the first one was a pomegranate, you know, some kind of fruits and things of that nature uh, from the surrounding area. And you, you know, offer it to the totem. And when you do that, you'll unlock some sort of power. For instance, the first totem will unlock the power of fast traveling, basically through like checkpoints in the cave. So the room that that totem is in there is a point where you can fast travel back to the entrance. Uh, so I haven't got really far into this in the demo, but eventually, you know, you'll have multiple totems that you discover, make your sacrifices, unlock powers. I know I've seen in other people's videos, uh, you know, you get some really cool powers while you're in the caves. And also while you're in there, you can find uh, ores like the one the only one that i've gotten so far is flint uh and then of course you can use that to make better tools uh like i took the flint to the npc that makes the tools made a flint axe so some parts of it are very very familiar but overall it's very creative and very unique to the game and i like it a lot okay now i want to talk about another really cool aspect of this game and that is befriending animals so there's animals wandering around the woods and to befriend them you uh, play a mini game where basically you walk up talk to the animal it'll ask you if you want to play your flute you say yes and then it'll do a mini game of you hitting uh, the notes at the correct time and once you complete the mini game, that will enable you to befriend the animal. And then after that, it'll be just like an NPC where you talk to the animal, you give a gift to the animal. Now, in the demo version, you can give one gift per day, two gifts per week, uh, and that will 
increase uh, the animal's love for you, and eventually you'll be friends with the animal. And I think it's really, really cool. I like it a lot. Now, I know I've seen in videos where eventually you can ride the animals. I haven't got that far. Um, I've never gotten past, I think, like two hearts with an animal yet. But, you know, I'm going to probably play through the demo a few times. And probably one of those times I'll focus on that and try and see how far I can get with it. But I just think it's a really cool element. And now I want to talk about crafting. So I haven't done a ton of crafting in this game yet. And almost all the crafting I've seen so far is just done from the inventory. You have a little box you can click on. It'll show you a couple, you know, you start the game with a couple of recipes, uh, nothing crazy, but you do start with a storage chest that you can craft. So that helps a lot. And uh, I definitely like that because games like this i'm a huge hoarder i need all the storage i can get so i love starting with the uh, the crafting recipe for the the storage container so that's great um and the other types of crafting i've seen uh that's not done from the inventory is the tool maker in town take flint and materials to her and she made me you know like a flint axe like i said uh so unlocking new crafting recipes is done in a really cool way i think and it's based, you know it's research basically what you normally would have some kind of research table or, or work table or something like that in this game your villagers get ideas and then you go you know they'll have the quest marker over their head and you go talk to them about their idea and they give you a quest and uh, the ones i've seen so far are you know like the sundial is the first one and I say, okay, I've got the idea for the sundial. You give me so much stone and then I can make it. And you complete the quest, give them the materials. And then you uh, talk to them about it. And they'll say uh, the idea was completed. And then they'll give you the item. You know, they give you the first one. And after that, you'll be able to craft it. Now, the sundial is like a one-time deal. You only need one sundial in the village. Uh, but like after that, there's one for a well. And the guy gives me a well, which I can place. But then after that, I have the recipe where I can make more wells if I want. And I thought that was just a really cool way of doing like research, basically, uh, where you're more involved with your villagers. And I like that a lot. Which brings us to farming. Now, the farming in this game seems to be pretty much what you would expect, at least from what I've experienced so far. But I have seen in other videos uh, how far it can go, how far it can advance with uh, the introduction of like irrigation and things like that. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting to that point eventually. Um, I don't know how much, you know, how far I could get in the demo version, even if I just spend the whole time uh, just focusing on farming. But the full version I definitely am looking forward to how far I can get on there. Uh, and irrigation is just, it's such a great idea to put into a game like this. You know, I know some other games you have sprinklers and things like that, uh, but the introduction of actual irrigation um, to, you know, cover your whole field basically, is just such a great idea. And of course, we cannot forget about romance. In a farm life sim, you always can romance the NPCs, right? Well, Roots of Pacha is no different. Now, I have almost no experience in this myself, playing the demo version, but I do know that you can romance the NPCs, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, going much further with that uh, on the full version. So it's there. I don't know much about it, but it's something to look forward to for sure. Okay, so my final thoughts on Roots of Pacha. From what I've seen of this game so far, and what I've experienced just playing the demo version, I would say that anyone who enjoys farm life sims at all is going to absolutely love this game, especially if you also love pixel art. If you love both, you're really gonna love this game, I promise. You know, I play a lot of these types of games and this really might be my new favorite. Um, I'd also like to mention 
before I forget that this game is multiplayer. So, you know, grab some friends and get prehistoric. I'm super hyped for this game's full release. Uh, unfortunately, no official release date has been set as of right now. However, it is set to release sometime in 2022. So keep an eye out for the release info because this is an amazing game. And at the end of the day, I would recommend it to anyone. All right, that's it for this video. That's everything I know so far about Roots of Pacha. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video or if you just like this kind of content in general, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope I see you around. Thank you.